Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. So our next talk uh, is by Rahul Santanam. He will tell us why or speak complexly the world on the cars. Um, yeah, thanks, Ryan. Um, yeah, so this joint work with Jan Pick, who is uh, um, at the University of Oxford and is now the Czech Academy of Sciences. So um, this is the question with which we started off this project, and we arrived at some sort of answer, which is what I'm going to try and uh, tell you about. Um, I've, uh, I'm going to try and make this talk interesting and accessible even to those who um, don't know very much about proof complexity. Um, so most of the talk is going to focus on kind of context for the, for the results here, um, and trying to state the results precisely, and um, giving some sort of perspective on what the results mean. Um, so I won't be saying very much about uh, the proofs. Okay, so um, let's kind of start off by kind of posing kind of a series of questions. What does the, the title even mean? So what is propositional proof complexity? What are uh, propositional proof systems? So propositional proof complexity studies um, the power of proof systems to prove propositional tautologies, right? So just as uh, Boolean kind of computational complexity studies the power of computational models to uh, solve computational problems. Here you have a theorem or um, kind of a tautology and you want to know what size of proof it requires. Um, and that's what we're trying to study here. Um, so the key notion here, defined by Cook and Reckow, is the notion of a propositional proof system. Um, so a propositional proof system R, so this is a slightly sort of unconventional way of, um, of defining it, but it's convenient for the purpose of this talk and is essentially equivalent. So what is the propositional proof system? It's just a polytime computable binary relation solving um, for, for tautology. So um, there exists a y such an r of phi y if and only if phi is in tot. So it's essentially a non-internistic algorithm for tautology. And essentially this equivalence here captures the soundness and the completeness of the proof system because if phi is tot, uh, is in tot, then there is a y uh, such an r of phi y holds. So um, that shows completeness and if there's a why such a R of phi Y holds, then phi isn't taught, so that, that's essentially soundness. And um, the key thing is the polytime computability of the relation. So um, the way to interpret it is that if you have a theorem um, phi and you have a candidate proof Y, you can check it in polynomial time, right? And you can define a sort of non-uniform version of this as well, where you only require the verification to be in polynomial size, um, by polynomial size circuits rather than by polynomial time algorithm. And that's also something that we, are, we will require. Um, so, um, so here, as I said, the interpretation of Y is there's a proof uh, in this proof system R. So an R proof of a tautology is just a string Y such that R of phi comma Y holds. And the proof size of phi is just the size, the smallest size of a proof um, of phi, right? And what we seek to understand is for, for various propositional proof systems um, and for natural families of tautologies, how the proof size in a proof system R um, grows with the size of the tautology. So the tautology is encoded in some standard way, and we want to know how the size of the proof, the smallest proof, grows um, with the size of the tautology. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is what proposition proof complexity is. But what's the point of it? Uh, what is it good for, right? So, um, so there's at least three different things that it's good for, and all of them will be relevant to, uh, to this talk. Um, so um, the first one so is that it's useful for studying the fundamental complexity question of whether NP equals co-NP or not. Um, so Cook and Reckow in their paper sort of defining propositional proof complexity showed that NP equals co-NP if and only if for all propositional proof systems R and all sequences of tautologies, the proof size in R is polynomially bounded, right? So, um, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, the equality of, um, of, of NP, so, sorry, not for, if there exists a propositional proof system R, so if there, if there is a propositional proof system R, and for all sequences of tautologies, the proof size of phi n and r is polynomially bounded. There should, there should be an existential quantifier here. Um, that's equivalent to NP equals co-NP. And that's not very hard to see. I mean, if, if, there, if there is a polynomial proof system with polynomially bounded proofs, then you can use that to solve tautology just by guessing a proof in the proof system and then checking it. So that would give you, um, so tautology is a co-NP complete language, and that would give you an NP algorithm for tautology. So that would imply NP equals co-NP. And conversely, if you had co-NP equals NP, that means that tautologies are in NP, and there's some polynomial time non-deterministic algorithm for tautologies, and you can use that to define a proof system where all tautologies have polynomial size proofs, right? So this is fairly easy to see, that this is an equivalence. And the hook recall program um, is to make progress towards this question, towards this, uh, this complexity uh, sort of a separation of NP not equal to co-NP by showing super polynomial low bounds for stronger and stronger propositional proof systems are, right? 
So um, what do I mean by stronger and stronger proof systems? Well, we say that a pr proof system R prime is stronger than R if anything that can be proved efficiently in R can also be proved efficiently in R prime. Um, and natural proof systems often tend to have some sort of ordering that they get, um, that it can kind of rank them from weaker to stronger proof systems. So um, the idea here was that by, pro by proving proof complexity low bounds for, uh, for stronger and stronger proof systems, you can make progress towards this, this complexity conjecture. So by the way, I mean, I'm kind of like assuming that most people here believe that NP not equals co NP. If you, if you believe instead that NP equals co NP, I, I would question why you are in this talk at all, because if NP equals co NP, there is a propositional proof system such that um, it's poly polynomially bounded for all tautologies, and that means that there aren't any lower bounds. There aren't super polynomial lower bounds for that proof system, and that explains why proof complexity lower bounds would be hard, because they're false. So, um, so that would be a very simple explanation in the case that you believe NP equals co NP. But what I'll try to point towards is a somehow more interesting and surprising explanation of why proof complexity lower bounds are hard. So, okay, so that's one reason for starting propositional proof complexity, um, that is uh, an approach to NP versus co NP. There's also um, the reason that it models algorithmic analysis. So um, it turns out that various natural classes of algorithms for satisfiability or tautology can be modeled by proof systems in the sense that um, if the algorithm runs in a certain amount of time on an instance fee, then uh, that can be translated to a proof in the proof system of size approximately t. Um, so if you want to study um, hard instances for algorithms, um, then one way to do it is to look at a corresponding proof system R and show low bounds in R. That would show that um, the corresponding instance is going to be hard for any algorithm that's chosen from this class of algorithms. Um, and so one example of this sort of correspondence is where A is branching or backtracking algorithms for solving satisfiability where you kind of choose a variable and then you set the variable to zero and then you, you kind of explore the tree and then you, you get, if you don't find satisfying assignment, you come back and you set it to one. So that's a branching algorithm. And that class of algorithms essentially uh, corresponds to tree resolution, which is a standard and fairly weak proof system. So that's the second reason for starting proof complexity. And the third one is metamathematics. So um, if you have um, a theorem, uh, you'd like to know what strength of proof is required to prove it. How strong a proof system do you need in order to prove this mathematical theorem P? Um, and this will be relevant to us because we're interested in uh, the question of how hard proof complexity low bounds are to prove. So the mathematical theorems that we'd be interested in are proof complexity low bounds. And we'll be interested in which kinds of proportional proof systems can show those theorems. Um, so all three of these, so these two um, sort of uh, reasons for starting proof complexity are reasons for starting proof complexity low bounds. And this third metamathematical perspective will be useful for us in kind of studying what it means for a proof complexity low bound to be hard. Uh, so it's just looking ahead a bit. Um, so what's known about proof complexity low bounds? So um, not uh, all that much, so um, especially for stronger proof systems. Um, so we're interested usually in super polynomial low bounds, and these are known only for proof systems that aren't, aren't very strong. So um, there's a famous result of Harkin, who showed a low bound and resolution proofs of the pigeonhole principle. I mean, resolution is a proof system that featured heavily in, in Albert's talk. Um, and um, the pigeonhole principle is just a kind of a, a tautology expressing that you can't put n plus one pigeons in n holes. It's easy to express as a propositional tautology. Um, so that has, uh, that's hard for resolution. And then there's this proof system called um, constant depth Fregger, um, for which I showed that there's super polynomial low bounds, again, for the pigeonhole principle. Um, so there's actually these sort of Fregger proof systems which correspond in a natural way to circuit classes. So um, resolution corresponds to clauses, uh, constant depth Fregger to AC0, and then there's Fregger that corresponds to formulas, and extended Fregger that corresponds to circuits. And um, looking um, at things from that point of view, we're even further behind in proving low bounds and proof complexity than we are in circuit complexity. Um, this is something that I'll get back to later. So yeah, on the one hand, proof complexity low bounds have historically been harder to show than circuit complexity low bounds. On the other hand, um, there's been almost no work in formally justifying their difficulty or trying to explain it. Um, there's a paper by uh, Grotschow and Pitassi where they look at this algebraic proof system and um, they say that low bounds for the proof system would imply low bounds in algebraic complexity. So somehow they tie the question of proof complexity low bounds to uh, certain kinds of circuit complexity low bounds, but that's, um, that's the most significant work I know in this direction. And we'll be doing something quite different here. Um, okay, so we're interested in proof complexity low bounds. So which kinds of tautologies are believed to be hard? So which are the hard candidates, right? Um, I mean, we like hard candidates which we can put our hands on that we can sort of find explicitly. Um, so can we find a sequence of polynomial time constructible tautologies 
um, say, phi n, where phi n is length n, such that phi n is hard for every propositional proof system? Well, it turns out that this is just impossible. And the reason is that um, given such a sequence, you can just have an artificial R that um, simply given the, 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 the theorem phi that it's trying to prove, um, it looks at the length of phi, it com computes the length of phi, and then it computes the corresponding phi n, because that can be done in polynomial time. And it just checks if phi n equals phi. And if it does, then it, it just accepts without even looking at the proof. So that's the propositional proof system that for which phi n has proofs of length zero, right? It's a very artificial proof, proof system, but it still counts the proof system in our sense. So if we, can, if we look at uh, tautologies that are generatable in polynomial time, deterministic polynomial time, we can't really hope that they're hard for every proposition proof system R. So the moral is that we, says we should use randomness, or maybe we should relax this requirement in some other way when generating hard instances. But there are a couple of candidate hard distributions which have been proposed and studied. Um, so one candidate hard distribution is just random DNFs, right? So if we take a random K DNF with delta N clauses, where delta is fairly large, then that's going to be a tautology with very high probability. Um, and intuitively you think, well, how do you prove that this is a tautology? It seems um, not to be so easy to do. And this is sort of related to Feiger's hypothesis, which says that random CNFs um, are kind of hard to solve. Um, it's a bit stronger, this says that random KDNFs are even hard to prove, right? But it seems plausible. Um, another possibility for a candidate hard distribution is random circuit low bound tautologies, right? So let's say you take a random Boolean function f. So you take um, a random string of length two to the n, and you interpret that as the truth table of a Boolean function. Um, and then you, uh, you kind of fo formulate a tautology saying that this Boolean function doesn't have small Boolean circuits. That's going to be the case with very high probability. A random Boolean function is indeed not going to have small circuits. Um, and you can formalize it. I'll kind of explain how to do that. And then it seems like something else that's quite hard to prove. I mean, from experience, proving circuit low bounds uh, isn't, isn't so easy. So this seems like another reasonable um, candidate. OK, so now um, that we have some uh, candidate hard tautologies, let me get to an informal statement of the main theorem, right? Mm. So um, like we have sort of some conditional results and an unconditional result. Um, so the conditional results, um, let me just mention one of them here. So suppose that these candidate hard um, distributions are indeed hard. So suppose it's the case that random circuit low bound tautologies are hard for every non-uniform PPS. Um, then it, we can show that there's a PPSR for which proof complexity low bounds are hard to prove in some sense. And um, I haven't yet explained what hard to prove means. That's something that we'll kind of do later and kind of uh, show how to formalize, formalize this properly. But intuitively, um, the fact that these tautologies are hard already means that low bounds for this proof system are are hard to prove. And this gives a different answer to the title question, right? Um, if you believe that um, these uh, hard tautologies are indeed hard, that proof complexity low bounds are hard because they're true rather than because they're false. So uh, it's sort of a kind of a strange situation where the, I mean, the, the, the truth of these low bounds imply that they're also hard to prove. Um, and it might be sort of reminiscent of Gödel's theorem of similar results, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that later. Um, and based on this, on this conditional result, we can also show an unconditional result, um, namely that there's a non-uniform PPS um, for which um, unconditionally proof size low bounds for R are hard to prove for every, by every non-uniform PPS. And this is just based on sort of a win-win argument in the sense that you either have the hardness of the random circuit low bound tautologies, in which case you have a propositional proof system R for which complexity low bounds are hard to prove, or you don't. So if you don't, then there's some non-uniform propositional proof system which um, can prove random circuit low bound tautologies. But then you can use again the argument that I had earlier, right, about NP equals co-NP. So for this proof system, these tautologies are easy. And so proof complexity low bounds don't hold at all. So of course they're hard to prove. They're impossible to prove in this case. Um, in the first case, they're hard to prove. In the second case, they just can't be proven at all or with proofs of any size. So in either case, um, you get this, uh, this result that um, there are no short proofs of uh, the uh, proof complexity low bounds for these random circuit low bound tautologies. So at this point, this still might be quite informal, and I'd like to kind of formalize this or flesh this out. So there's a couple of things that I didn't really explain. So one is what circuit low bound tautologies really are. Uh, how, do you, how do you define them? How do you formalize them? Um, so take a Boolean function f on n variables, which is given by its truth table and a size bound s. Then you just form this propositional tautology in DNF 
with states that were all circuits of size s, c doesn't compute as, right? There's just a universal statement over circuits of size s. So intuitively, any universal statement of size s, which can be checked in polynomial time, can be formulated as a DNF tautology. And indeed, this can be expressed as a DNF of size order two to the n times poly n s, where you just have a disjunction of two to the n DNFs, each of which expresses that the circuit fails to compute f on an input x. There's two to the n possible f's, and if c fails to compute f, there must be some x on which c fails to compute f, right? So the propositional variables encode the circuit c here. Um, and by random circuit low bound tautologies, we just mean such tautologies for uniformly chosen s, um, with, with this uh, circuit size parameter chosen to be some large enough polynomial in n. Um, so there's this conjecture of Rudich. Um, so Rudich conjecture that random circuit low bound tautologies are hard for every non-form PPS. So this is, in fact, a set of hard tautologies, right? Um, and this is sort of the formal statement of Rudich's conjecture, but I mean, that's perhaps, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, not so important. Um, so Rudish's conjecture essentially says that these are indeed hard tautologies. And he was originally motivated by the question of cryptography against non-deterministic adversaries, but, but his sort of conjecture has obvious implications to proof complexity, some of which he realized, others that have been developed in future in, in work by Jan Krychek and others. Um, so, but the main thing I'd like to focus on is the formalization of um, what proof complexity low bounds are. Uh, what does it mean for proof complexity low bounds to be hard to prove, right? So here, um, it's natural to use the meta-mathematical interpretation of proof systems, right? So um, when you say that this, uh, a certain uh, theorem is hard to prove, um, well, what does it mean? Or what, do you, what do you mean when you say it's easy to prove? When you say it's easy to prove, you mean there's some simple proof system or standard proof system which can prove it uh, efficiently. Um, so if you formalize the proof complexity low bound um, in an appropriate way, then you can, you can prove that in some propositional proof system. And indeed, known proof complexity low bounds, such as those for resolution, and constant depth Frege have short proofs in the extended Frege proof system when they're formalized appropriately. And what does appropriately mean? Well, there's a very standard formalization of it. So similar to the formulation of circuit low bound tautology, you can also formalize a proof low bound tautology, where you just have a propositional formula, which given phi and t says that phi doesn't have R proofs of size t. And because R is a propositional proof system, this is something that can be formalized as a propositional formula. And you can similarly formalize this for non-uniform propositional proof systems. So um, these are the formalizations we need, and then here you have more precise statements of these results. So I mean, yeah, it might uh, kind of look a bit elaborate, and that's why I had this kind of informal statement first. But um, uh, yeah, but hopefully this uh, this is something that makes sense now. So if Rudish's conjecture holds, so if these tautologies are indeed hard, then there is um, some proof system R uh, for which proof convection low bounds are hard to show, um, and we can show a similar result for uh, the random um, KDNFs. Um, that if Rudish's conjecture holds, then there's a proof system uh, R for which uh, proof complexity low bounds are hard to show. Uh, and then the unconditional result follows from theorem one, um, essentially using the proof sketch that I had earlier, the win-win argument. Um, so there's kind of like a, a short slide about the proofs. Um, 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 and the, I'm not going to kind of get into it um, for the lack of time, but the essential idea is to use some notion of pseudo randomness. So what I said earlier about Rudish's conjecture being um, about zero randomness against non deterministic adversaries, that's sort of the perspective that's useful in establishing this, um, at least in establishing theorems one and, and three. Um, and the proof of theorem two builds on some work I had with Shuji Hirahara uh, on the minimum circuit size problem, introductions um, to that problem. Okay, so um, I just kind of like try to give some perspective now and connection between circuit complexity and proof complexity, right? So I already said, well, there's some kind of correspondence between circuit classes and the proof systems. Um, and um, there's sort of um, various similarities in that circuit complexity low bounds are famously difficult, um, and some of the best proof complexity low bounds are inspired by circuit low bound techniques. But the metamathematics of circuit low bounds has been studied fairly well, and various sort of barriers are known. Like example, the relativization of the natural proofs barrier. And it sort of turns out that the natural proofs barrier, um, our results can be thought of as giving an analog of the natural proofs barrier for proof complexity. Um, so the natural proofs barrier says that if strong one-way functions exist, then um, there's no polynomial time algorithm that certifies hardness for a significant fraction of Boolean functions. Um, and uh, what our result says is that um, under Rudish's conjecture, then there's there are no polynomial size proofs uh, of hardness for a significant fraction of uh, random circuit low bound of circuit low bound tautologies. Um, and the comparison somehow is that when our result rules out efficient proofs of hardness, which is somehow are stronger than just ruling out efficient algorithms for hardness as in the natural proofs barrier, 
Um, but the weakness of our result is that it's about some somewhat non-standard proof system R, while the natural proofs barrier is about hardness against standard Boolean circuits. And I think that's an important direction for future work, to kind of extend our results or strengthen them to talk about um, natural proof system, our proof systems such as Frege and extended Frege. So there's another perspective which I'll skip, and I'll just sort of close with some, uh, some further questions. Um, so one sort of question is, can we show sort of unprovability unconditionally also for random DNFs rather than just for circuit low bound tautologies? Are there other families of candidate hard tautologies? We only considered a couple to which these proof techniques maybe don't apply. Um, so I'm not really aware of, of any. And in fact, I would be even tempted to conjecture that if you give me any polynomial time sampleable family of tautologies, then proving proof complexity low bounds is going to be hard for, the, for that family. Um, and sort of, yeah, most importantly, can our techniques be adapted to show that proof complexity low bounds are hard for specific propositional proof systems of interest, uh, such as Fregger or extended Fregger? Um, so I think I'll close with that. Um, well, okay, I mean, so essentially the, the idea with, ran, with, with circuit low bound tautologies, I mean, circuits are sort of a way of compressing proof table of Boolean functions, right? And I mean, if you, if you take like a random DNF, that's going to be incompressible, while a DNF that, um, it's easier to think of CNF. So a CNF that has a satisfying assignment can be compressed using a satisfying assignment, non-trivially, while a random CNF cannot be compressed. So compression is something that kind of separates the satisfiable CNFs from the random ones that are unsatisfiable. And that's something that can be used and to give a reduction from one case to the other. Right. I mean, so I can tell you what the non-standard proof system is, uh, which, for which the, low, the, uh, the result, uh, the, the conclusion holds under the assumption of Rudish's conjecture, is basically take resolution and add to it an axiom saying that, say, SAT doesn't have small circuits. So that's, okay. <laughs> that, that's a fairly, right. yeah, but, but it's, we don't know how to prove SAT doesn't have small circuits sure, in right. EF, so, um, right. Right. So, uh, so that's what R, but in the unconditional result, it's, it's a non-constructive proof, so we don't have any information about R. Yeah. 